So now we're going to go back to our drawing and look at our third hole. Which this is also a countersunk through hole for a 1024 drill bit. So we're going to keep this drill, this drill in here, move to our next position, and we're going to drill this all the way through. Then we're going to change to a, count, a countersunk. So, here to 1.5. my counterboard tool. This will be at a specific angle. I know that the angle of my screw is an 82 degree angle. This is an 82 degree chamfer. They're perfect for each other. We can stick this in the jig shark. This is also like the center drill and can go in a collet. for this to be perfectly flush with the rest of this plate. So I'll turn this on. same position. I am not doing it this way. Um, so now I can see that that's just a little bit high. I'll pull it out and drill a little bit more. Um, what's really nice about the counter sinks is the first one is a little bit of guess and check, but once you have it correct, you can set your, your stop to the exact depth that you need and all of your counter sinks will be the same. We only have one counter sink part in this part because we're only doing one of each kind of hole, um, but that is typical practice. So, just on. Um, I didn't need to take very much off, and I don't want to jump the gun. You can always remove more material. You can never add it back on. That is also a little bit too high. I would go to the other locations of where I need a counter sink and I would go to the stop. And that way they're all the same depth and I know that they're all perfectly flush like the first one was. Um, now we're going to move, move on to hole number four. This is our counterboard through hole. This one we're using a larger bolt. We're going to be using a, the shoulder bolt that is used commonly for the caster bolt project, um, just because we have a lot of them lying around the shop. And so this is it. We want to counterboard this. So what we're going to do is we need to take 
this out. And we're going to put in our 3 8 inch drill bit for our through hole for this um, part. So we can lower the Z considerably. I already have my 3 8 inch drill bit. I'll just put this in the jig show. Tighten with the key. Now we're going to move it to the position of hole number four, which is at negative two. Right, that's perfect dome money. And we're just going to drill this through. So we're going to keep our speed at 600. So This is since this is the field session part. We have one of our field session counterboard tools. You notice has a nice long shank. We're going to put this one in the collet. So we're going to be taking out the Jacob shank. Just pull this off. We need this counter board to go. Looks like 0.25 is exactly how deep this is. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this machine on. We're going to peck. We're going to go down till we see a z, till we see like a hint of a chip. Then we're going to zero this in the z, and then we're going to drill using the z. So let me show you how to do this. Let me turn on high range. set the zero on a Z, we're going to turn the machine back on and we're going to cut 250 thou upwards using the Z here. sharp we have a lot of long chips but you can peck on and off as you just as you do here with the Z. Now we have done that we can um, since we're done drilling in this position move this away and test our counter board. This is flush with the surface as perfect as we can get it and um, that part has been done. So I'm going to take out my counter board because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to put my drill chuck back in so I can finish this last hole. 
My last hole is going to be my 1024 screw, but now it's tapped. Um, we're going to walk through tapping on the mill. This, because of that, we're not going to be using our through, through, our through drill bit. We're going to be using our taps, which is a number 25. You can also get this from the charts or a, any uh, machinist black book you can find, as well as probably the internet. So I'll pull my number 25 drill bit. I also advise that you always check the number or the letter on the side of the drill bit to make sure it's correctly put away in the drawer. Sometimes they hop over. And you don't want to be drilling the wrong size. That in, tighten it with the key, and we're going to move our X into the negative two and a half position, which is the spot for drill five, for hole five. So now we need to, we know we need to take out our drill bit, and we're going to lower the Z a considerable amount to be able to fit the tap and the tap spring and the tap holder in our machine. So, here we go. Take out our drill. And inside the Jacobs check, we're gonna put our tap spring. There, these are, the, these live with the taps. They're just springs that make, that hold the tap in place and keep it concentric. Ideally, you could also put this in a collet. Then I grab my tap handle, my tap. Just like checking a drill bit size, always check that you grab the right tap. Mine is a 1024. tighten those together. My hands are covered in oil, so we're going to use the help of a white ball wipe. And basically, what we're going to do here, we're going to hold these together like this. I have not moved my X and my Y hasn't moved for a long time, um, so I know that my holes are already concentric, but if you're just lining something up, you can move your X and your Y and you can eyeball it to make sure that this is concentric. The reason we like to tap on the mill is because it puts the least possible amount of downward pressure on the tap. Taps are very brittle and will break easily. They're also usually the last step in your process. And if you break a tap, um, they are very hard to extract. And often parts are, have to be remade. Therefore, we want to make sure we don't break taps and by doing it in a mill. Um, it's worth the time of the setup to make sure that your tap is completely perpendicular and um, doesn't break. So, want to be liberal with our cutting fluid. We'll do half a turn in, quarter turn out, half a turn in, quarter turn out, half a turn in, quarter turn out, repeatedly until we have reached the depth we have desired. Um, for my drawing here, there is no specified depth, but just to make sure the screw will go in, I happen to know this is my screw and I want it to be at least this long, just eyeballing it, I'm going to go the length of the tap. This is also a starting tap, so the first bottom portion isn't the complete thread. Um, just something to keep in mind when keeping a track of how deep a tap you have made. Make sure you put all your force. this and um, we're going to cut it in half, show you what it looks like on the at the outside. Remember general cleanup for the mill is always clean everything up, make it look better than it was before you got here. Um, put away all your chips. We love drilling because we get these giant ribbons that fly all over the floor so make sure you clean a large radius and make sure you sweep. 